Hello everyone, it's Alex from Active Happy Mama and today I would like to invite you for our second episode of Active Mama uh, live show. Uh, so today we will be featuring amazing Magda Stachowiak. She is absolutely incredible, so I really want you to tune in. We will be talking with Magda. Uh, yeah, let me just invite her now. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, Magda will be with us in a moment, so I'll wait for her and we will start. Let me just refresh this here. Yeah, I'll wait for her when she's with us and I will finish introduction. Okay, Magda, we are waiting for you. All right. Okay, so once we are waiting for Magda, <sighs> So once we are waiting for Magda, I would like to ask you, uh, when you are watching live, if you can send us some likes and hearts and comments under this video, because, uh, you know, being live is quite stressful. And one moment. Yeah, so being live is quite stressful. Uh, so Magda is quite nervous about it, which I don't blame her. It's always quite uh, uh, stressful to be here for the first time. Uh, so if you can send us some likes and hearts so she can feel your love and she can feel your encouragement, it will be absolutely wonderful. So I'm just waiting for Magda to, um, to join us. You can see that it is connecting, but it doesn't let me add her. Well, we're waiting for her. Okay, so uh, basically before she joins us, she will be with us in just a moment, I would like to introduce Magda to her. So she's absolutely incredible and I'm so happy to be able to uh, feature her here today. Uh, so Magda, Magda is a mom. Uh, she has two little children and her running journey and her fit journey um, has been actually quite interesting. She will share more of that in a moment with you. Let me just have a look. Magda, I cannot see you here. Magda, let me try you one more time. Okay, we need to be a little bit patient to... to, to wait for Magda. Um, let me maybe turn this off first. Okay, we, we've been doing a rehearsal with Magda earlier and it was working, so I just hope that it will work in a moment as well. Yeah, so Magda is a mom of two. She has like two little children and she is a real example of that you don't need to quit your passion, you don't need to uh, give up on training and active lifestyle when you are a mom. She is um, running with two kids in her jogging stroller and she will share more with you, but she was not a runner before she had kids. So she's absolutely incredible and she's a true inspiration uh, she is running anything from 5Ks to um, half marathons with the buggy in front of her. So let me just wait for Magda. Hiya! Yes! I'm sorry, <laughs> finally. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Yes, you are here I have no idea us. what happened. I just could not connect at all. So I'm no. here. Yeah, lovely. I was, I could see that it was like adding, connecting, and then connection failed. I was like, one more time, <laughs> one more time. Uh, sorry, it's just my kids, they will be running around definitely, so. <clears throat> okay, Magda, first of all, thank you very much for being here, for oh, taking my invitation, and we have like some people watching us live, and I'm sure that they will be inspired by your story, because I was, and I'm so happy to, to have you here. 
And I know you shared with me that you have your kids uh, in the background. So if they join yeah. the slide, it will be even more real because you are a mom and you are looking after your little ones. And when they are here with us, it will be absolutely wonderful. Yeah, and we'll see. We'll see later. <laughs> yeah, and I know that, you know, because you're a mom, you know how to multitask. <laughs> so doing uh, everything together. Okay, Maria, so I introduced you already that you're absolutely amazing Thank and you. really example of, you know, mama combining active lifestyle and healthy lifestyle. So we are so happy to have you here. Um, yeah, so if you can start, uh, I would like to ask you by sharing with us uh, a little bit more about yourself before you had children, whether you've been active before, whether you have been training before or not. So if you can tell us a little bit more before you had kids. Sure. Well, basically, um, I have not been fit. I've not been active, not doing, not, not much really before having kids. Um, I did, when I was a teenager, I did a bit of like orienteering, but that's it basically. So I have not been into running at all. Um, yeah, nothing, nothing really. Oh, sorry. I have two now joining me. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. So um, how about like during the pregnancy? Have you been doing anything? Hello. No. <laughs> there you go. They're here now. <laughs> yeah. Quiet. They would like to be in the center of attention, of course, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, nothing when I was pregnant as well. No, I've just been gaining weight, to be fair. I did put on around 27 kilos each pregnancy. And I was just, I was just dying. <laughs> well, I can imagine. Anything, okay? So, yeah, no, I was just enjoying the pregnancy, really. <laughs> okay. Eating whatever you wanted, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you can tell us a little bit more, what is the age difference between your kids? Sorry? What is the age difference between your children? Oh, yeah, it's exactly two years and three months. Um, so, yeah, Gabby, she's the older one. She was first. And then we had the, we had the little boy, Adam, as well. Okay. <laughs> So how did that happen that you have not been active really your whole life? You have not really done much in terms of activity during your, before your pregnancies and in your pregnancies. And yeah. now you are <coughs> mama. So how did that happen? Yeah, well, to be fair, um, there was a point when I just was not feeling comfortable having extra weight on me, to be fair, after the pregnancies. Um, I did kind of um, let it go after having Gabby. I was just like, oh, I will have another child. So I would put on weight during pregnancy anyway. So I was like, I laid back. Completely. Doesn't matter, yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just had a long holiday of any, of, of any activities. And, um, and then after having Adam, I knew that that will be um, a perfect having a couple. That, that, that should be it for us. So, um, so I was like, okay, so I have to start doing something just to get me fit. Um, obviously, losing on weight is much more difficult than, than putting on weight. And, um, but Gabby was a preschool then, nursery preschool. Uh, but I still had Adam about me and he was around like eight months then and I was like, okay, I have to start doing something. Um, there was a lovely uh, gym on my way to preschool with my, when I was walking there with my daughter. Um, I did pop in once to ask whether I can come with my, with my baby then. And they were like, well, not really because there's loud music, this and that. And I could not find anything around just to, to, get, to get myself active going or anything like that. Um, and one summer um, in 2017, my husband had an idea, because he is a runner, um, let's just buy um, a running buggy. I said, well, do whatever. I'm not going to run with it anyway. So you do it. If you like it, you choose, you buy, and that's it. We will have it. Um, and he did. He did buy a double one because then Gabby was, uh, she was three years old. She's, yeah, nearly, yeah, three years old, nearly. And, um. Um, so he got it, they did like it, he was ready with them, and I was like, hmm, maybe slowly, slowly, I will start doing something. So I did some, like, runs, um, and, um, I was getting very tired, of course, but, um, 
I was getting very tired, but um, I was like, okay, I have to do it somehow. And then one time on my way to, um, to Gabby's preschool again, um, I saw a little leaflet about the buggy workout uh, boot camp for mums and children at the same time. I was like, oh, that's brilliant. So I did go for one of the trial ones. Um, I did like it a lot. And then when I did some extra runs, I wasn't really feeling good. Um, so I had to make like a little, little break. But then um, basically that, that, that's how it started. So I've just slowly, step by step, and I was into it. So, yeah. Oh my God. So have you been kind of uh, going to buggy feet classes and running or you were doing just buggy feet classes? And then it was running or how did that or you were doing both well i've started with a little bit of running um uh, but that was a long distance because obviously um well after not not being fit at all after 500 meters i was dying <laughs> so that was it that was that that was the most i could run that time but then yes yeah, slowly slowly it was increasing so then when i went for the trial one um trial um back in workout classes um, I did like it. I wanted to get back, but then there was Christmas time and we went to Poland as well for, for after Christmas. So the break between, it was just getting longer and longer. So we, I felt like, well, okay, that's not a perfect time to go back. And then when I felt quite bad, I had to go, um, it, just about some heart palpitations. So I had to go to, to see a doctor and um i had to have a halter as well to get that money to to see what's ha actually happening um everything seemed to be fine but the whole process of like going through the medical you know stuff in here it took ages so one time one day in the morning um that was may <laughs> already may um yeah i was like yeah i'm just gonna pay for the classes and i'll just go and, and that's how it did. So I took the running bug. Hello. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. Just connect uh, for a moment. Yeah. Sorry. So yeah, and um, and yeah, and it just went like that from you know from just slight running into. Um, longer running i think the classes the buggy workout classes did help a lot as well because running is not always everything you have to um get that extra you know um strength of different parts of your body as well and that helps when running so um yeah and i was just increasing the distance when running as well um basically every day i was going with the push chair or running with the push chair to get my daughter to preschool so that was just something you know something how, how long the distance from your home to the preschool well it's one kilometer well it's come not, on like, you're dying after 500 meters right yeah yeah that's the thing so and it's up the hill as yeah. well so there you go yeah oh my god you know what it's uh, very interesting what you are saying and i love what you said about the fact that uh, you basically felt that you wanted to do something and you were like okay i'm going to pay for the classes because i'm doing it so yeah. what kind of happened in your head in terms of the mindset or the motivation that one day you woke up and you said you know what i'm just paying for the classes and i'm going regardless what was kind of going on because i think it's very important for other moms to understand why yeah. you one day decided this is it i'm doing it yeah well uh basically i wasn't feeling comfortable that i was just getting tired too quickly i live on the third floor in a flat and every day I had to do that distance with the kids and all the like shopping, some or different stuff. So going just up that stairs, that was, I was thinking that's wrong that I'm getting tired after just walking up that, that, that stairs up. And I said, no, I have to do it. And I know I'm really bad with keeping up to diet with the diet. So that, that kind of losing weight way was not just work was just not working so mm -hmm. i knew i have to do something extra and i had the i had the time as well because i i work in the mornings only part-time so the rest of the day i'm just like free you know instead of having kids um mm -hmm. and yeah so you know i was going for for long walks with my younger one anyway so i said well maybe i'm just going to swap that into running so we did it <laughs> And the classes, yeah. yeah, the classes are three times a week, 
in the mornings an hour each so that was just perfect timing as well because that time my, my daughter was at preschool so I just had the little one with me yeah, yeah. if you can share a little bit more like about those classes because I do know buggy feet classes yeah. and I actually will be starting doing my own uh, buggy feet classes from oh. May oh, yeah. uh, around my area yeah because I know that many moms are asking for that I know it's very big in US, it's called Stroller Strides and it's massive, it's absolutely massive, like all moms go to those uh, Stroller Strides classes. Buggy Feet, it is in UK, it is popular but it's still not as popular as in other, um, especially like across the ocean, so in US. So if you can mm -hmm. say like, you know, what classes gave you, because it is important, you know, when you are a mom you feel lonely you feel, especially when you haven't been active before, you don't really know what to do in order not to hurt yourself. So in what sense, like classes, you think that were really helpful for you to, to move forward? Well, basically, well, my instructor, she keeps repeating as well, like, it's very important that if you want to do running, that you, for example, everyone should be going to the gym as well. So that's kind of that what we what we do. We do like gym exercising. We do cardio. We do core cool workouts as well. It's basically like a boot camp. We do different types of um, exercising, and I think that did give me that extra boost as well. So um, I could I was just feeling fitter, and because sometimes, well, I was finding running very difficult and and uh, tiring. So I know people do find it they prefer to do that kind of fit classes rather than running some of them but i was just taking this as as just an extra um mm -hmm. and um i think yeah they're really good well the thing is that we're not running with a buggy on the classes we don't really do well sometimes we have to exercise with our kids as well because if they're around there's no way you, you just have to you know have to do it somehow so yeah I think I think that kind of classes they're just brilliant and um and it's really worth to have a pick at them yeah. yeah I do agree with you like you know you need to do the whole body workout and um, if you're a runner like you know most of the uh, people that I know who are running they do other workouts as well you do mm -hmm. definitely need to focus on the core you do definitely need to do strengthening um, exercises Plus, you know, lots of people, they do swimming, etc. So it is like a combination of, of everything. And yeah. like, I loved what you say, like, you know, about the classes. Because what I love about those classes is that, first of all, you have the instructor who knows how not to hurt yourself as a mom. Yeah, and definitely. second of all, it's, um, it's about fitness, activity, mm -hmm. endorphins going up. But also, as a mom, we sometimes feel lonely. So when you go out there and meet other moms, yeah, get that's you. Who you understand. Get, yeah, you get the support from them as well, because sometimes if you feel down a bit and you feel like, oh, I'm just rubbish, and then you see, you know, maybe someone had an even worse day than you had. So even that kind of little things they do help, and it's lovely to hear about, you know, all the struggles and all, all the good things as well from other mums. So I know because uh, before I was going for some of the play groups with with my children as well. But at some point, it just starts to be quite like, okay, I prefer the fitness classes rather than yeah. going to coffee and having a chat with the mum, which I just see every single week as well. So that was just, I just needed some, you know, extra, extra stuff to, to, to do. And honestly, in the May, it will be a year now and I just, I just can't feel of stopping it. <laughs> Even though, yeah. you know, I, I feel like I feel, I feel much fitter than I did when I was obviously starting, uh, but I just... Don't, don't think I would like to stop them. No, because they're yeah. just, you know, part of my daily routine now, to be fair. So, yeah, I've been today as well. That's why I'm in my workout. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know that you are today as well. Are you going to the classes? That's for the audience interest, uh, like, you know, whether it's raining or windy yeah. or snowing. Yeah. No, it doesn't matter about the range or, or any weather conditions. You just go. <laughs> go yeah. <with> <laughs> I love it. Okay, so coming back to running. So you started running and as you shared, you were dying after 500 meters. Yeah. 
And this is actually a very good point because I hear a lot of moms when I'm working with them or I'm talking uh, with them and they're like, oh, I would like to run, but you know, I only run 5Ks. And I'm like, what do you mean only run 5Ks? You haven't run forever in your life. And even if somebody is saying I run 1K, well, it is difficult to run 1K. Yeah. So you know, give yourself a credit for, for doing this. So even 500 meters is not easy if you haven't done anything in, a, in your life. Like. Yeah. Yeah, so, I've started, yeah, I've started quite, quite slow. <laughs> and, then, and then, yeah, I was just gradually um, increasing it. So when I have started, like, um, what could I do? What could I do? Well, I've started a class to send some of the running earlier. Then by the end of July, um, I was able to do my first park run, which was a 5K, what, a 5K discount. So I was very, very proud of myself. And then, sorry. And then, no problem. <laughs> and then basically... Another month, so another month or two, and that was, and that was then, like ten k, and mm -hmm. then a bit extra and a bit more. So yeah, I was doing around ten k's. Yes, that kind of distances, and then from September, when we've started, so I have a bit of a hold on a second. Sorry. All right. Okay. As you see, like, you know, first of all, we are live, so anything can happen. Second of all, Magda is a mom of two kids, and definitely she's, like, with them at home right now because her husband is at work. But she's still doing this live, so I absolutely love this. Sorry, that this is so real. The house in the room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, I was, I was able to do up to 10 case ones as well. And then... Um... With the buggy, I think first 15k I did only with Adam. I thought that was around October, November. Um, but then as well, um, in September, Gabby started preschool. So that meant I could do the running every single day as well. Well, I had to do the running. I had to do it anyway. <laughs> so I preferred to do it in the running way. And, um, and um, yeah, I did my first buggy run. 15k in October, November time, and my first half marathon distance in December. So there you go. It did go kind of like, you know, quite easy having like daily runs anyway, which I did. Yeah. With my children. So, so how many times during a week you've been running, uh, and whether it was always with the buggy or sometimes you're running on your own? Well, it, at the beginning, from like from September, I it's usually like six times a day, and um, a week, a week. Sorry, yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, a six week. Times. Yeah, six uh, <laughs> times a week. But I'm just trying to think. Um, usually, getting Gabby to preschool, and then I had to run with Adam because he was not nursery, uh, not nursery or preschool at all then, and. Um, and from January, Adam started nursery, so and he goes there three times a day, uh, three times a week as well. So that means I get now three times a week. I get runs on my own during lunchtime, and then um, any other days it's just with them. Okay, well, so you kind of run quite often, I would say, like doing six times a week, and yeah. sometimes on your own, sometimes with them. Plus you are doing uh, classes three times a week, you said, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Classes. So you are definitely very fit mama. <laughs> yeah, that's quite a lot I put on myself. But yeah, I kind of like it. I just like to be tired when I get back now. I know that's a bit crazy, but yeah. I just No, like it's it. not. I can totally relate. <laughs> so yeah, actually like, you know, touching on this point, like why why are you doing this? Why do you run? Why do you keep going to the classes? What that gives you? Why, why do you do this? Well, it's kind of like the, gives you that extra bit, but as well, well, basically, um, I've lost a lot, like, not a lot, right? I did lose some weight. So, um, after a few months, the first few months of running plastics exercises, um, I could see that it's working. 
so I just yeah I just keep going with that and that that makes me feel better and um yeah if I don't really do any running in the morning now or any time of the day I prefer running in the morning um it means like I'm just not tired enough I'm just not feeling you know or I'm not awake enough so yeah I prefer to go into something yeah definitely absolutely I can I can totally relate and yeah. I can probably also kind of like I would like to ask you that but being a mom is not an easy job and even though we love our children to beats sometimes we would like to yeah put them on the side yeah exactly and doing something for yourself like running going for the classes running on your own but even if you are running with them in the buggy you kind of have this time for for yourself so it's so important also for your mental and emotional sanity would you agree yeah. with that yeah yeah i totally agree yes when i started the classes i was just feeling very good like my head was feeling good because I, i could finally do something just for myself as well not just running around and uh, because oh the child had to be asleep no i could do when he was sleeping i could do something on my own like doing the exercising bits or just anything else yeah so that was that's definitely a good side of like being able to be active with them as well yeah Yeah, I think it's so so important and many times when I'm speaking to moms they feel I don't know it's the, whether it's the cultural or society thing that you know when you are a mom you need to give up on everything that you liked before all your hobbies all the things that were important for you because you need to focus on the kids. And yes, I do agree that you are looking after a little human being oh. and um that needs uh, your help and your support but have you said that <laughs> you're just back now <laughs> no problem yeah it is it is normal when you are having kids the day is unpredictable <laughs> you need to look after them so magda will be with us in just a moment It'll she just needs to yeah she just needs to sort out a fire <laughs> with the with the children uh yeah so we are definitely here here live with with her and i do admire her so much for uh being like with two children and still being open to do this um live uh, show with with us and you know she was a little bit worried when we spoke earlier on that you know they may be not helping her they may be arguing or anything like that and she was like okay what would we do I was like okay we would not do <laughs> nothing we basically just keep uh, being uh, alive and yeah, back. yeah. she's back I'm don't back. worry <laughs> we support you here <laughs> thank you um, yeah so what i was kind of saying was that uh, you know moms think that they need to give up on their lives and uh, because they need to look after kids so okay i do agree we have a little human being or two or more to look after and they need us they support us however if you don't look after yourself first mama you will not be able to help them you will not be able to serve them and the amount of times i have spoken to different moms and that was also my journey when i started looking after myself when i started having some me time when i started running exercising training for my marathons and things like that only then i felt like better mom mm. because you know with all the frustrations i went for a run all the frustrations went away and i was coming back as a better mom better wife and a better person so i would like you to tell us like your thoughts about it that you know looking after yourself is not a hobby but it's a obligation for moms Uh, well yeah basically um i think it's very important just to stop doing something for yourself uh because kids they cope they copy you that's that's quite something obvious and then um i just did not feel good at some point when i just could not i don't know run after a, a, a my 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 daughter in um 
in her bike, for example, because I was just, it's just, that was just too much for me sometimes. So, um, yeah, it's definitely good for if you're doing it and then kids get that as well. And um, How about your kids? Do they like running with mama? Do they like going to the classes with mama? Uh, they do. They, they, enjoy, they enjoy sitting in the buggy when we do it. They enjoy going to the classes as well. Um, they've been today, they've been running around. Um, Gabby in the morning when she heard we going, she was like, oh, mommy, let's put my running kit on. I really want to, yeah, I really want to do. So basically, well, we did some running as well before. Uh, we went for a quick run. Of course, Gabby wanted to run next to me. I was like, yeah, Gabby, we just have to get somewhere so you can do some running as well. So, um, and she did, actually. She did come out. She did 500 meters. Uh, she was like, oh, I'm tired now. But she was running next to me. Um, we started the uh, junior um, park runs as well. So that's wow. And she did it twice. Of course, she does a bit of a walking then as well. Uh, but she likes it. She wants to join in. And that's very important, I think. Um, they get the, yeah, they, they watch us and they copy, definitely. If we do some stretching, if we do a warm up, they do it all as well. I saw your last photos as well for stretching after the running. So, yeah, that's exactly what ha is what's happening in my, in my, you know, in my, in my house as well. Um, yeah, they know how to use the uh, um, the roller. Yes. So, yeah, they, yeah. I think it's, it's really amazing. Good. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Like children see, children do, and yes. we often underestimate the fact how much influence and how much of a role models we can be for them. Yeah. And yeah, it's amazing how they really like copy you. They want to roll with you. They want to stretch with you. And yeah. Yeah, and the junior park run is uh, how how long is it? It's I two k. Yeah, it's wow. only two, but only and yeah. Is it like a minimum age for the kids to be doing the? I think it's four years. Yeah, four years. Wow, I, I didn't even know that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I don't crazy. think that. Well, I don't think that every single town which does a park run, um, they they do a junior one. I have no idea. Uh, mm -hmm. but for quite a long time, we didn't know about that as well. Uh, because it's it's in different place than our our park run on Saturdays, mm -hmm. because the the junior one is on Sundays in in our city. Oh. So, um, but yeah, it's fun. It's fun because yeah. there's just quite a lot of kids actually, and um, and yeah, quite a lot of first timers recently as well. But it's good. It's good. I think yeah, Gabby enjoys that. She really likes going in there. So <laughs> yeah, Even well, the prizes. She thought. Uh, the first one she finished, she was like, oh, mommy, where's the medal? I said, no, we don't get medals here. I'm sorry, but we had to go to town to buy one anyway. So. Oh, oh, yes, exactly. Yeah, even though, yeah, even though, you know, small things, but she can remember them. Absolutely, they love medals. I know my little one, they always want a medal. When yeah. mommy or daddy or, who, or uncle is running, he's like, you know, where is my medal? So, you know, he wants to oh, his medal. That's that's good. We're on the good side then, because when I run with the buggy, they get medals as well. So they go like four medals each already. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. So um, coming back also like to the running, because you said that your husband is a runner. And I remember like, you know, when you sent me like the message about how did you start running, you told me that he, he, he was a runner and he's quite a long distance runner, I would yeah, say. Yeah, he's the advanced one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah so how when you were starting out the, was he kind of coaching you or you didn't want to listen to him or how how was that in your family well we did to start we did some runs together but i think he was supporting me he's still supporting me but not really not really um trying to be too harsh or teaching me like oh you got a wrong posture you, or this or that he just like he didn't let me to go like with the flow kind of so i can i can check it on myself and basically i know well, he's much faster than me definitely so i know he um i know he does kind of um give gives me like a lot of backup when he runs with me that means like he's supporting me then because I know he would go just much, much, much quicker. He could be much quicker. Um, so yeah, but he does, yeah, he does much, much longer distances than I do. He's just, currently he's preparing for like 80k one. 
So yeah, <laughs> yeah. But no, it's definitely good. It's very helpful to have someone next to me as well. But I think quite a lot of the, like the uh, the Facebook groups with different different mums running running mums because there is quite a few of the running groups that I'm I'm with on Facebook. So any of that kind of things they do help, and they um, even though that's not a real person next to you, they do have help because you get the support from them and you see that you know you're doing good or there is someone who's doing a little bit you know not so good so you get that extra support in your head oh well, yeah. yeah i do agree with you and i am a part of like different running groups on facebook as well and i absolutely love it because the support is amazing whether yeah. it's like you know groups for moms uh, or whether it's like groups for like mix and um, genders um like for instance we are both a part of Polacy Bigayom in uh, uk so like polish yeah. people run uh, in uk and there are much more different groups and i love like when you have a question when you have a challenge if you ask there are so many people ready to help you Exactly. And it doesn't matter whether you just started or whether you are running already ultra marathons of like 80 Ks. I love the support and the community who are so willing to, to help. And whatever you ask, whether it's with regards to running clothes or anything related to running triathlons, anything or buying a buggy, yeah. it's so much, so much, um, uh, so much helpful. And also like the inspiration you look like people, they are training and they are starting in different races and what kind of times they are doing, which is which mm. blows my mind recently. Yeah. <laughs> but and it's so amazing what they're doing. Now, <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, that is that is a huge help to, to have it all around, definitely. Because, well, let's not lie to each other. You can't, you can't always do it on your own. You do know... You, even like if you would like to do it on your own, you always check other people's um, like um, um, records, how they how they did it, and you just kind of compare yourself, isn't it? So it's kind of natural. You have to go through that, but definitely the support is is very important because mm -hmm. well, if you if you do run, it's always nice that someone shouts shouts out your name, isn't it? When you when yeah. you do running, so it's good. It's good, definitely. Yeah, it is. And like also I think for moms what's important I would I would yeah. I would repeat this again that sometimes like mommy's life is lonely during the day, especially when husband is working uh, and you are on your own and you know when you actually do something for yourself, you go for a race, you go for a run, you feel that the feeling of accomplishment you know i've made it it's amazing and you know sharing your pictures on facebook instagram anywhere and people support you and they are they feel proud of you and you feel proud of yourself and i think it's so would you agree that it's lovely to be able to do this also for the sense of accomplishment self-confidence and yeah yeah definitely definitely it is because well i do that <laughs> i do i do some probably some of my instagram friends or something they're a bit bored with my posts about putting them from all the runs to be fair um but it's good it's good if you get that that kind of support as well it's very important and um yeah i like it i do like yeah. it <laughs> Yeah. Okay, Magda. So tell us a little bit more about doing your first half marathon with the buggy because that is absolutely brilliant. Oh, I must you. say that, you know, I'm running with a buggy as well. I've done different races, but in terms of races with the buggy, I've done 10K. So I haven't done that half marathon yet. So I want you to, to share a, a little bit about that. Plus also you told me that it was in... It, quite challenging weather conditions so how um, was it <laughs> well yes well the uh, um actually the first idea of doing it uh, in my mind it it did appear um, after running the first um distance of the half marathon which i did in december with my husband he was running with the buggy then i was like i just want to do the distance i don't need an extra bit to to extra um, extra hot stuff to go through 
Um, so, uh, and then I was thinking maybe, maybe I was, I will think about that. And um, I did go through some of the advertisers about runs on Facebook. And I found one and that was in Windsor. And it did say, oh yeah, the perfect buggy running place. Um, the perfect place to do the, your personal best and um, because it's flat basically um, so I was like well maybe maybe I will maybe I won't but just to make sure just to stay on the safe side I did email them and uh, to see whether they will let me to do it with the buggy anyway um, it did take a while to get um, to get the response but I did get it and I did get it positive as well I thought okay so now I have to just sign myself up. I wasn't, I, I, would, I didn't want to do it on my own. And I asked my husband if he's going to do it. And he was like, yeah, whatever, let's do it. It's just, it's, he said, it's just half marathon. <laughs> so, please. Um, so yeah, I wasn't really sure whether I, whether I will be able to do it or not. Because um, I did not run a half marathon distance with a buggy before. Because the longest one I did, that was around just after Christmas. Um, after Christmas when that was the time of school so I took my two for a ride <laughs> and we did 16k then so that was the maximum I did before um, but there you go I've signed up I paid and I was like yeah let's do it and the weather was getting so nice Friday before the half marathon it was like 12 degrees and sunny um, the next day it was zero and snow <laughs> and windy um so yeah that was quite harsh um I, I was like well yeah i would do it anyway i would do it and uh, so yeah we went yeah we went to um windsor it wasn't maybe the best because of the wind and i was like open plan so that was quite difficult because um well yeah sometimes the buggy was just like a boat it was just catching the, the air and that was just not 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 perfect um but yeah it was very cold the first i think i could start feeling my feet back again after warm-up of course anyway um after 4k so i had to run for 4k first and then i could feel my feet again because it was that cold um but yeah we did it i didn't want to sleep Gabby was just chatting and looking for wolves in the uh, in the forest. So I was like, "That's sorted. That's good." Um, at the very at the end, she was a bit bored, um, and she was asking, "Mummy, stop, please." <laughs> I was like, "Gabby, well, you will get a prize. You will get a nice prize when we finish it." And um, so yeah, and we finished it. It was good. It was a relief. Um, after I've stopped and I got my medal, I was swearing <laughs> that was a stupid idea. I did it, <laughs> and um, but yeah, I was happy. I've, we've managed. Yeah, we've managed without a drama, without asking for food, without asking for for drink, uh, without um, without flat tire. That I was very, very actually scared of. Um, so yeah, we've managed and it's good. It's ticked. Everyone got medals and we're happy. Not thinking about next one that, that, that quickly, but yeah. And not thinking about half marathon, uh, no, the uh, whole marathon, definitely. So you mean with the buggy or on your own as well? No, no, no. Just not thinking of, no, 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 no. I don't think no. I don't, well, I know probably, um, I wasn't thinking I will do half marathon ever as well, like six months ago, and I did it. So maybe in a year time, I will be able to do the marathon, but I'm not in the rush. No, no, definitely. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. Like, you know, first of all, congratulations on doing the half marathon with like two kids in the buggy, plus yeah. also with the wind and, you know, so cold. I know what you mean, because when I'm running, even on my own, when it's windy, I'm like, please, no. Yeah. I feel it's more oh. resistant to work out rather than cardio. Yeah. Yeah, yeah sadly, so I, was, I was kind of aiming to do it um, in two hours. I did it in two hours and five minutes. 
So what about, it was windy. <laughs> it was it was windy, and that was really stopping me. It was getting hard. Yes, yes, definitely. But yeah, it's good. Good memories, definitely. Really good memories. Yeah. And you see, like as you said, like like six months ago, if somebody told you that you would do a half marathon with two kids, you would be like, "Come yeah. on!" So, and you know, you've done it. And yeah, I would. I wouldn't believe. I wouldn't believe. But we, yeah, uh, we went through it. It was good. All right. So, what's what's next for you? Like any other races planned with a buggy or with no buggy? Uh, well, there is there is a buggy event around here which I did take part in back in November already. It was lovely. Um, it's in um, like 40 minutes away in the forest as well. Oh, well done. Um, I'm not sure whether my dates will, will be fine with covering that, doing it. But uh, definitely I've signed up um, for the um, um, Wings of Life run in Poznan in Poland. So uh, we're doing that. And I'm still thinking what I will run with the buggy. It would be lovely. Um, I'm sorry, but you can't. I asked. I, oh well, well. I, I signed up. I signed up for the Wings for Life as well. I've done the Wings for Life last year in the UK in Cambridge, and this year uh, our whole family has done it last year. And this year we are will be in Poland, so we are doing it in Poland. And I wanted to do with the buggy. But I sent an email to the organizers and actually like worldwide it's not allowed with the buggy. Well, they did say to me as well that it's not officially allowed. Okay. That's what well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, the question is whether to risk it if I will show up. Maybe there will be someone who doesn't like it. That's the thing. Okay. And But yeah, it's I, the email I got, it didn't say you can't, but it didn't say you can as well. So okay. it's in so between. The, the email, okay, so the email I got from them, it was, you can't. <laughs> really? Oh, there you yeah. go. But, uh, well, it's up to you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'll see, we'll see. I have no idea. Definitely, we'll, we'll, because we'll be in Poland then, and I live close to Poznan, so we will definitely do it. But whether with the buggy or not, I'm not really, I'm, I'm still not really sure. Yeah, that's the yeah. thing. Are you doing, like, your husband is doing this as well? Yeah. 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 Right. Will you, if you cannot do it with the buggy, would you have somebody to look after the kids? Oh yeah, no, definitely. There will be uh, someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, right. that's not, so that would yeah. be lovely to see each other as well, like in person, because we will be in Poznan, so we can definitely need Yeah, it's definitely. Over there. Have you done a Wings for Life ever before? No. You no. will love it. Because, well, last year I wasn't really that kind of you know distance runner yet <laughs> yeah exactly because that was in may and that was the beginning of your journey <laughs> yeah and my husband did it last year but just with the phone uh with the kids and they did 26k then but wow. he, yeah but that that wasn't really um he wasn't he wasn't trying he said <laughs> so what's he running the buggy in cambridge oh no no he was just with the phone with the app you know oh ah, i understand okay yeah okay, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So yeah, you can yeah, do yeah. the virtual race as well. All right. Okay, yeah. great. Okay, so Wings for Life, like in a moment. And then, you know what? You can still aim for doing the half marathon in the summertime, which will be not that windy <laughs> somehow. Uh, no, but it's kind of like they're all tempting as well. But I'm not, I'm just not sure. Not really, not really sure. Uh, there is... Like in Poland, for example, for the summer, there is loads of them like happening on and on. Um, in here as well, actually, quite few around my where I live. Um, I'm just not sure. I'm not that kind of like I have to have a name. I'm not going to sign up for any any run just to do it. But something something nice. I did yeah. some fun runs last year, um, which is the collar one as well. Um, mm -hmm. And that was lovely and I could do with Gabby because that was just 3k um so just something with the soul that's what I want to do something you know something for myself for my goals or maybe something just for fun so not sure yeah. you know, no, not, <laughs> not signing up for anything just to do it and get the medal because that's not my idea that's not, mm -hmm. I'm not like that yeah. yeah, I love it when you are saying that, you know, something with the soul. Uh, there are so many races, like every week you have 10,000 races and, yeah. you know, fix up something 
which resonates with you, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing. I, I'm the same. I don't just go for all the races. I need to go to either a lovely location or like the locations like, you know, finishing in Wembley Stadium, for instance, was a big one for me, or the Olympic Stadium. Like mm -hmm. things that, you know, are kind of iconic for me. And so I can, uh, I can totally relate. Yeah. Yeah. Magda, you are such an inspiration in terms of, you know, doing this with the, with the kids. If you can tell us, uh, if you can share that, you know, if, what would you say to other moms who are with the kids or with one child and they feel lonely, they would like to do something, but they are not sure whether they can, what would you say to them in order to get started? Well, definitely. The first thing I would say, and I do, do say to, to some of the moms I already know and they ask, is to... Can I just wait a second? Is to... First of all, just have a look around what's available because some of the groups, it doesn't mean like if, if it's a, even the running group, it doesn't mean it has to be like advanced. If it's, um, if it's like exercise, like the boot camp I go to, you know, it doesn't mean that like the mums have to be the fittest ones in the world. Some of them, they just want to get feel a bit better. That's what I did to start it off. Uh, and just some of them want to get that extra extra support and be fit or just to see someone because very often if you have a child if you don't go play groups to do if you don't join any play groups in town that means that you are um you are with your child all the time and because well for example my husband he works long hours um during the day so most of the day i'm just with my kids which means I just have to have someone to talk to who's not a child under five <laughs> and I think that's very important um, um, just go outside leave the house go searching on I don't know Facebook Facebook or um, just google something which is what's happening around your um, your house so I'm sure there is there is quite a lot happening so um, if not just take a buggy and go for a quick and quicker quicker walk and um yeah that's something to get you started oh yeah, yeah. definitely <laughs> yeah oh lovely and what would you say to moms to stay motivated to not to give up after the first one when they are dying after 100 meters of the faster walk what would you say to them well, it's always hard to start with. It's all, it's, it's, all, let's not lie. It's not, it's, it's not, a, you know, a dream. No one is, no one is a perfect person to, and they will be just flying after the first time. So you need to train, you need to get that stamina going. So, all right, Gabby, sorry, in a minute, Gabby, okay? In a minute. We'll get there in a minute, that'll be a prize, okay? Yeah, okay. She wants an ice cream. <laughs> there will be a prize. I love that. Yeah, there will be a prize, but she cannot wait. I did say about that too early. <laughs> yeah, so you're just saying, like, you know, just don't give up, right? Yes, you need to, you know, I, I, I know that, I know, I know, definitely, I know that the starts are quite tough. Um... But not to give up. Maybe it's easy to say. It's harder to do. But um, I don't know. I'm, that's why I'm never self. -mo I'm not self motivated. I can't say that really because um, I'm not exercising at home. I'm not doing any exercise at home. Anything I do is I go outside. I do some running. I do my classes three times a week as well. Um, but apart from that, I'm not doing, and I know I'm not, I would not be, if not joining the group, I would not be able to do it on my own. So, um, yeah, don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to ask for support from someone else because, yeah, they, they just, they're waiting for you. Definitely. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure they are. <laughs> yeah. Magda, I think that you are a little bit too hard on yourself. You are saying you are not self-motivated and you are not training at home. Excuse me, you are running four, six times a week and you are doing fitness classes three times a week and you are saying that you are not doing exercises at home. Well, I don't think you need to and I do think that you are self-motivated a lot. <laughs> well, no, well, you see, well, 
the thing is that like for example um if not joining the group i don't think i would do any exercising on my own i would do the running but not the exercising sometimes i do pop into the outdoor gym as well when those classes are cancelled for example or i don't know i just have a free minute <laughs> so i just pop into one of them uh which are great great invention definitely and worth giving a try it's not just for old people it's for anyone just go and jump on it um but yeah well what, what can i say well i don't know sometimes i just feel like you know i know i did my my, my own stuff in the mornings that's 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 my time um but then i don't know in the afternoon just for me it's my family time <laughs> Yeah. Yes, I love that. I actually would like to, yeah, I actually would like to ask you something about that. But before I do, uh, we will be like finishing in about like 10 minutes. So if you are watching us live, if you do have any questions to Magda, if you can write them in the comments so we can, we can answer before we go. Um, Magda, like what you said, like was very important because you said that um, asking for um, support and um, if it wasn't for you that joined the classes, it would be difficult and I do agree with that because you know sometimes people ask me what keeps me motivated and whether I do have days that I just feel that I don't want to go out and I'm honest there are days that I don't want to do it and for instance for me if I sign up for a race then I need to train and there is no like excuses for that but if I'm not aiming for a race sometimes I go sometimes I don't so it is so, so important to be able to uh, have something that motivates you, whether it's like group classes or a race or anything like that. Otherwise, it's so easy to, to, to sleep over. Yeah. Well, I think the, the good side of my, of my daily routine is that um, it's always, well, it's usually me taking kids to preschool or nursery. So whether I want to or not, whether it's raining, it's snowing or whatever, I just go. And, yeah. hey, Gabriella, just one second. You will get a prize, okay? Just be nice and you will get a prize for ice cream, yeah? <laughs> okay. Gosh, yeah. Stubborn for ice cream now. <laughs> yeah, we will be finishing in a moment. They will get a prize. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it doesn't it doesn't matter what what kind of weather we have. I just go, I just do it because someone needs to take them to preschool. And the thing is that if it's raining, I think it's even better if you go for a run rather than walking because you're not that wet. <laughs> so <laughs> that's that's my that's always my idea. That's always my <laughs> it's like you know that's what I say to myself. I just go, I quickly run over there, and then we're yeah. done. But then <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Then when I'm wet, I'm just going for another extra few k's of run anyway. So yeah, wait, Kathy, five minutes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Magda. So I don't want to keep you like any longer because your kids are asking for mommy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's no for ice cream. It's just ice cream. That's that's what's important. Yeah. <laughs> like, ice cream, like, right. uh, <laughs> yeah. So well, I first of all I want to thank you one more time for for being with us. And thank for you. anybody watching, thank you so much for being here. You can connect with Magda on Facebook. She's also on Instagram. She's in different running groups. So if you want to connect with her, you can find her on different social media. Also, if you do have any questions, you can post a comment under this video. So she will, she will get back to you as well. And yeah, just to sum up, Magda, if you can just tell us, uh, just to say goodbye, uh, just the last few words, I know that we've already covered that, but, you know, if you speak to a mom who wants to do something, who has a dream of running, let's say, 5K or anything, but she's afraid that she cannot do it, just tell her the last kind of few words, what would you say and how would you encourage her to do so? Well, first of all, just never give up because you just think, you, who are you doing that for? You're doing it for yourself. And... Um, you will get you will see you will get the results so quickly and uh, what's the most important if you do it that with a child or um or someone someone near nearby um they do they do see you they do do watch you and they will copy you and so an active active mum 
um, it means an active child as well, definitely. Because, yeah, I can see that. I have a two, two and a four year old and, um, and yeah, and um, that's definitely, that's definitely working in our family. So, yeah, not to give up. Take it slowly. Listen to your body. Listen, listen to yourself. Listen to your head. What's happening there. And, um, and yeah, it, it will be done. Definitely. Yeah. Right. Oh, Magda, thank you so much. I, I love what you said. And it's so important that what you are saying that you are a role model for your children. So children uh, see children do and they watch yourself. They watch your husband, that you are active. And uh, I, I'm sure that you're like Gabby is already like running. So Adam will be running soon as well. So yeah, he's absolutely wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Magda, thank you so much for, for being with us. Thank you everybody for watching. You can still watch the replay. It will be on this page. So if you would like somebody to listen to this and get inspired by Magda, you can share, you can comment, like, uh, you know, let's go, let's go viral. So thank you, Magda. I want to wish thank you a wonderful you. day. <laughs> yeah, thank you for inviting. That's been a lovely experience. Yeah, sorry for me disappearing at some point, but uh, it's life, so. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's life and I can totally relate and I do admire you that except of challenges, you still took on the challenge and you are absolutely amazing. So thank, thank you, Magda. Thank you. Thank Have you. a wonderful weekend and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you.